Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Stargirl. This is episode four, Wildcat. Um, I'm tired. I think I've said everything that I needed to say. So let's just get into this episode, and I'll try to stay in frame this time, because I know I was, like, leading out here all the time. Anyways. Um, yeah, I'm very intrigued to see. It looks like the thumbnail. It looks a lot like the... Am I even on? Hello? Okay. I have to check, I always forget. Um, it looks a lot like the ousted popular girl, the slut shame girl. So, I'm curious to see how, how she fits in. Is, is she really related to the original Wildcat, or does, does she just get chosen because of whatever reason? Um, but yeah, let's just get into this. Hell nah. Hell nah. <laughs> Don't do it. She going all the way, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I saw the boxing picture, so there's something there. I I've heard the name Yolanda too before, so she might actually be related, I can't remember. Are we for real? How'd she get that? How'd she get that? She literally had it for like one second. How'd she get that? Trash. She got, yeah, so. That's all the stuff she got. Which is interesting because we haven't seen any Green Lantern. Yeah, we have a Green Lantern battery here, but you know, we've seen the other three in promotional footage, whatever. We haven't seen Hand either, the, the pen. But I'm curious. What do you think you're gonna do? Double stack? Yo, Barbara, we got any Pop Tarts? You better not. Here you go. Girl. Not in front of the children. <laughs> Please. Hey, uh, I fucking hate this kid like? so Chicken. much. Chicken. Why? If there are other villains in Blue Valley, I need to know who they are. Yeah. And I, I agree need to with find Pat. them without them finding us. Like, and how are you going to do that? I don't know yet. All right, but when I do, search for the people I'll first. The authorities. What if they are the authorities? <sighs> but that's good. <laughs> it's. I'm, Where's the mi mal mi the, mi the middle point, you know? Henry. Break up with her. Why are you even with her? <laughs> Look at this beret looking dumbasses. Would you just say to my boyfriend, huh? Something dirty, I bet. Listen, he's seen enough of you. Got it? <laughs> you can't <laughs> Again, I work in a school setting. <laughs> I'm not condoning violence. I'm not condoning violence. I'm not condoning <laughs> child abuse, anything like that. But goddamn, okay? <laughs> this, this girl. It sucks. She was like on top of the world and then one bad decision. And it wasn't even like. I, I still don't get how it got spread out. Like, it seemed like Henry didn't spread it so Cindy must have gotten it somehow but I don't know how she got it Dr. Ito in the beginning I didn't understand why you brought them together hello but now I've seen the light the light Who's the hell is this bitch and I'll never betray you Cobra commander not like the shade shade okay it is him shit I appreciate your loyalty doctor his costume is so dumb, but the freaking eyes are really cool. Okay, we get it. She boxes. Let's get on with it already. It's so sad. Go upstairs. I'll call for you when dinner's ready. Actually. Oh my God. About dinner. It's been three months. And also, like. 
I don't. That's not. That's not. That's not right. Okay. That's not a right punishment for what happened. Never should have sent him those. He never should have shared them. It's getting to me. It's getting to me. After a few months, oh, I shit. thought... It's getting to me. It was getting serious. <sighs> but I guess not for him. You want to see how I blew up his car? <laughs> Girl, you ruined in the yeah. moment. <sighs> but okay, whatever gets you the team, right? Don't tell me. Left him my son. Wizard. <sighs> he so wanted to be like his dad. Like his dad. His dad was a councilman, wasn't he? I gotta go. Sorry, Pat. I just, I have to go. Come on, Pat. Wait, wait, Detective wait. Pat, let's go. Wait. I swear, if all of her character was just to lead up to this moment where she tells Pat about the wizard, like, that's kind of weird. They were building this her way more. <laughs> I showed you my costume. Okay, yeah, but you look good. Don't be shy, please. <laughs> Come on. Be good. No one's home. It's just us. <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? Hold up. What the hell just happened? <laughs> You're checking Wikipedia? <laughs> Didn't come with an instruction manual. Okay, here. Powers and abilities. Apparently, he could cut through metal using his claws. I could get used to this. What the hell? No, not a toaster! <laughs> It says he always landed on his feet. Okay, I want to talk about this at the end. Like, I'm sorry, my face looks like this, but it's it's cool. I like it. Wikipedia said. Shit. Oh my god. You better not. <laughs> Hi, Barry. How are you? Oh hey, god, Beth. thank god Beth's here. You and dad are my best friends. No. Yeah, I agree with the mom. Janitorial Robert speaking. Uh, Robert, yeah? you can't just throw supplies in a closet like that. <laughs> what are you talking Swear to god you're not in here. Swear to god you're not in here with Henry. I don't think he did it. Like, yeah, he's an asshole, but I don't think the way that he was acting, I just feel like he didn't do it. Are you... You gonna kill him? Put your clothes away. Girl, who's you? She's invisible? Oh, she jumped. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> oh, hell no. Nah. She not part of this. Oh, she's... Is she Fiddler? Okay. <laughs> Who is that? She's not in the picture, right? Like, in the Injustice Society picture. She's not, she's not there, is she? Or is she on the far right? That was the weirdest freaking scene. <laughs> I wish she would talk out loud. Like, I know it's most realistic thing she wouldn't say her thoughts out loud but I want to hear what she's thinking right now what the hell was that you gotta go down who the hell's watching them is that Beth okay of course Beth is looking up the one person who actually looks up Yolanda how do you know it's Yolanda <laughs> swear to god <laughs> I trusted someone I shouldn't have but that was months ago I feel like I've learned my lesson and I've been punished enough Help me move forward with my life. She's so, so that good. <laughs> I can be the Yolanda Montez I used to be. I don't know if they're going to agree. You'll never be the Yolanda Montez you used to be. You disgraced this family. And you disgraced yourself. 
I'm glad the brother is at least like sticking up for her. I actually love that. Uh oh. No. I swear to God. She better not be dead. Let's start with that. The God. So, I, I I don't know her name. I'm sorry. I don't want to call her the wife, but that's that's what I know her as, the wife, um, the wife of the wizard, the wizard wife, <laughs> the witch. Um, <laughs> like I said earlier, she, the way they were building her up, throughout this season so far, um, it made me feel like she, her role was going to be important. And so when she disappeared, you know, when she was like, I gotta go, I'm gonna leave town, like, I could see, I understood where she was coming from, like, from a character narrative perspective, it made sense. It was just, like, for an overall plot, the amount of screen time they were giving her, it felt like there was no way that would be the end of her story. And with the way this ended here, she's either dead or abducted. So, obviously, her story has a little bit more to go. Um, it, it cha you know, it depends on if she's dead or alive still. Um, but yeah, obviously people are keeping tabs on her. Um, she's been saying too much stuff and she was a loose end. So obviously they had to care take care of her and stuff. So again, I'm very, very intrigued about her character because ever since she was introduced in episode two, I was just like, why are we getting so much weird screen time focus on her, especially with Pat? Um, so I just want to see the conclusion of what, what what's going on with her. Um, okay. So, random stuff throughout the episode. The hierarchy of the Injustice Society. Is Icicle on top, or is it... I think that's King Dragon, someone said. Um, I have no idea who what character that is, but it it's a lizard-looking person, so I'm assuming it's probably King Dragon. Um, again, I have no idea who that is, but I'm curious to learn. Um... But anyways, um, I'm just curious. Who's, I I I don't know what the hierarchy is. He is he on top or is it Icicle? Because Icicle seemed a bit nervous around him, but that could just be because he's creepy. Um, because in the end, Icicle was the one giving orders. He was saying, you know, I'm gonna build whatever. Um, New America is gonna go forward. I want you to build this. Um, but then King Dragon was like, I want the dude's body, and he was like, okay, sure. Um, so. Just the, the power dynamics there are very intriguing to me. Um, since since we're talking about the Injustice Society, um, they mentioned Shade, which is awesome. Again, like I said in the episode, I've been reading Flash recently. He showed up a little bit. He had like three episodes, not three episodes, three issues. Um, and, you know, I, from <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the same Shade. Um, there's probably different iterations of Shade, but the only the Shade that I know is from the Timverse, so Justice League, the animated series, um, where he's just a villain. He's just some dude in a gentleman top hat, whatever, and he has powers over darkness. And that Shade is the same. Like again, with with these characters, especially in this show, there's legacies. So you know, maybe it's not the same Shade, but you know, I guess between then and now, he's been reformed. He's been, you know, sort of going to an anti-hero heroic role, um, uh, in the comics at least, which uh, the Flash uh, comic touched on a little bit. Um, I kind of it intrigued me enough. He's always been an interesting character to me. I really like characters that deal with darkness and, you know, uh, sort of light manipulation. Um, anyways, a uh, little a little tangent, but I. I I've, I've been meaning to research ever since ever since I've read that that was literally 3 a.m. in the morning because I couldn't sleep I read it this morning um, but anyways um, I've been you know I, I want to research more about his character that 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 character in general because it is very intriguing to me um, uh, and so hopefully the show touches on it a bit more um, 
again, he you could barely see him in the wide shot, but then they like focused and specifically pointed out the, gl the glasses. So um, he is a character in the show. So I'm curious to see if we've met him for one, you know, is that janitor guy maybe? Um, or is it somebody else that we don't know? Um, and then also just to learn more about his story, about his reformation, what kind of role he might have to play in the show at all, if he has one. Um, Cause yeah, I, I'm just really a fan of villains that turn to heroes, heroes that turn to villains, rarer, rarer, but it happened. Um, people that switch straddle the line. It's very cool to me. So that's enough about the Justice League. Um, Yolanda. Very good performance this episode. I want to figure out who the actress is because she was doing awesome. Um, uh, you know, very hard-hitting, heartfelt scenes. Um, and it sucks the situation she's in. Like, you know, I, I'm glad she stood up for herself in the end, at the end of the episode. Um, but it's just... I understand where her parents are coming from and her family, you know, um, there's definitely a very strong traditional bound, uh, it looks like, I'm assuming she's some, from a Mexican family, um, you know, they're very culturally tied to more conservative views and, uh, uh, you know, views on sexuality and stuff too, so I can see, again, it, it, it's all logical, it, it's real, um, it just sucks that it's happening. Um, so yeah, again, great character. Um, the other thing is, I think I'm not too familiar with the character of Wildcat. Again, I'm gonna say that for a lot of a lot of this show, I'm not too familiar with it. But um, but it's I I feel like I've heard that name Yolanda before. Um, I was gonna say it was from Teen Titans, but that was Pan like Panther or something, wasn't it? Panther. Um, that's not the same character, obviously, but. I, just Yolanda Wildcat, it feels like I've seen that, heard that somewhere before. So if you guys know, let me know. Otherwise, I'm, just, I'm probably going to wiki it um, <laughs> after this. Uh, because it just, it's so, it's in my mind. That, like, I know, I know Ted Grant, isn't it Ted Grant? Um, the original Wildcat. Um, the one that trains Black Canary, all that, yada yada. But for some reason, Yolanda just feels familiar to me. So I'm cool. You know, I, I, I like that this, this iteration is obviously a legacy character, um, and just making them, you know, the original Justice Society of America was very white male, um, so it's cool that we're getting, you know, female versions, uh, Latino versions, um, well, Hispanic, whatever. Anyways, um, it's cool that we're getting some diversity here, um, in these younger legacy reincarnations. Yeah, Henry, I'm going to touch on it really quick. I, From what they showed, it didn't look like he was the one that sent the picture out. He was probably sharing with his friends, with the, you know, it was him again, it was him by the lockers with his two jock friends or whatever, and he was kind of like snickering at his phone, so he was probably showing them, but like, it wasn't until Cindy snatched the phone from him, and he took it back, and he was like, what are you doing? Um, so that makes me feel like he didn't send it out, it was somehow Cindy but then she only had it for like a millisecond, so I don't know how she transferred the number. I don't know. Um, you know, it's either weird story, you know, weird, uh, incomplete, bad storytelling in that we didn't really get that full exposition of he was the one that sent it, or there's enough ambiguity that it is part of the plot that he didn't send it. Because I, I don't know. Like, they want to make me feel bad for him, and so I kind of am. But also, like, if strictly narratively speaking, you know, we're taking Yolanda's side, which is he did it, then I don't want to feel bad for him. But just from what I've seen so far, it feels like he didn't do it. So I'm trying to give it the benefit of the doubt. Um, okay, <laughs> the Wildcat stuff. Um, I like the montage scene. That was a really cool scene. Like, it's like, let's look on Wikipedia quick, because, you know, it's very much like, I don't know what Wildcat does, let's go... <laughs> like 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 I've been saying, you know, I'm gonna Google it right afterwards. So it's it's very real in that sense. Um, it was cool. Like, okay, we got a quick rundown of the power set. We got claws. Um, you know, it we can land on our feet, whatever acrobatic. Um, that was all cool. It was fun. My problem was, I didn't like that the suit had the power. Um, because that just feels like it takes away from the characters it feels like you could put anybody in the suit you know we spent a good third of the episode 
establishing the fact that Yolanda is a good character, you know, like she she's pure of heart or whatever, you know, she she deserves deserves a second chance. Um, we see that she is physically capable, uh, so she can fill out that role. But you know, we're spending so much time developing Yolanda, and then all of a sudden we put her in the suit and bam, she's Wildcat. It's like no, I just didn't like that instant activation. Like the suit could suit form, you know, it was cool, but like. It, it, it made it too simple because like are we gonna get the same thing with dr midnight and our man um you know green lantern like green lantern in a sense that's how it works you know they just like the ring gets on and all of a sudden they have a suit and they know how to do stuff you know it kind of makes sense but for these other characters they're much more well wildcat specifically again unless this is the part of the character in which case I'm, i need to research but from what i understand it's just a dude it's kind of like a batman green arrow kind of character where it's just like they're physically you know strong and capable and they have gadgets and stuff to help them out same with wildcat you know he's just a boxer who puts on a suit you know <laughs> like i just don't like that the suit is the thing that makes the character you know i haven't seen the spider man um yeah uh, homecoming or far from home either but um you know uh, the famous quote from homecoming is that if if the suit i don't i don't know the exact words but basically tony stark is like saying like you know if you can't be spider-man without the suit then you don't deserve it so that's kind of how i feel about yolanda like if she's you know it seems like she's capable but and then all of a sudden the suit is just going to give her all this other extra stuff for free it just doesn't feel earned um and so I, I don't know, like I said, it was cool to watch, um, cool to see all these powers. I feel like she got a bit catwoman ified you know, um, again, from my understanding of Wildcat, he's just some dude that punches people. So seeing her flipping around and, you know, flipping around is fine, you know, acrobatic, whatever. But then like she has claws and she can climb and she's stealthy, you know, it's like, okay, now she's getting a bit into catwoman territory and I don't really care for that. Um, I want her to be Wildcat, not Catwoman. You know. Anyways, that's all my gripes. Um, let me know what you guys thought because this is a very good episode. I'm really starting to dig the show. Um, I'm not sure if I'm there yet because Courtney was such a back burner part of this episode. Um, I want Courtney to be the heart of the show still. And so far, the emotional part was from Yolanda's part, not from Courtney. So I'm waiting to get that attachment to her character. Um, but this is a very good episode. Very good standalone episode. Um, pushing the plot forward. Some very cool moments. King Dragon. That's what he is. Very cool design, like I said. Um, so yeah. Let me know what you thought. Can't wait for next episode to see... What is it called? It doesn't have a name yet. That's right. Oh, it is! Our Man and Dr. Midnight. Holy crap. What? Okay. Well, Beth... I wonder which one she's got. Well, it looks like Beth is our man. I, I still don't know which one. Wait. <laughs> Beth is the one in the green and red. And then I'm a... Hey, that could be Henry. What if Henry becomes the dude in yellow? Again, I don't... <laughs> I would say the superhero name. I just... I can't... Our man and Dr. Man. Those names are just so similar and their suits are just so bland i can't differentiate them but anyways i think it would be cool if henry does you know if it, if he is redeemable i think it would be cool if he does become i'm gonna guess that's dr midnight i don't know which one it is um because it looks like beth is the other one uh so yeah anyways i was saying but then we have that dude the the stone not stoner the loner dude um you know, in the first episode, he was in last episode too, I think. Uh, so he probably is going to be the one, but still. Anyways, there's some white dude. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, let me know what you guys thought. Did I miss stuff? Any Easter eggs that you think you saw? And yeah. Uh, I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.